In this session we're working on a Ranchilio Class 8 uh, DE2 group automatic and we're going to be focusing on the portafilter gasket otherwise known as the group gasket and the dispersion screen or diffuser uh, screen. We're going to remove the screen and uh, also the gasket and replace that. Not a big proponent of removing the screen on a daily basis mainly because uh, it gets rid of the evidence of whether you're cleaning the group, uh, the inner workings of the group, and the brew valve uh, where we get coffee residue after every drink. So, I walk up to the machine, I use my flat bladed screwdriver, or uh, because this nut, uh, pardon me, bolt, is hex head, we can remove it with a wrench, much easier with a screwdriver. So I remove the screen, pardon me, screw. This is a stainless steel screw. And then comes off the screen on the previous to 2008 uh, machines. Uh, we have just the jet breaker. On post-2008 January machines, this whole area has been milled out and will accommodate uh, a brass block, a diffuser block and what we can do then is pull that block away and put in a pod adapter kit allowing us to make a, a great tasting pod. Um, this one word about the screw, never replace the screw with a screw that could rust. Uh, if that does rust up in the group head, the only way you're going to get it off is you, in most cases, it's going to be next to impossible to pull the screw out, in which case you're going to strip the head. If that ever becomes the case, what we can do is take the screen and pry it down from both sides, basically turn, turning it into a taco and sandwiching the nut in the middle of the taco and then throwing a wrench, uh, pardon me, pliers on the outside, and then you should be able to turn the screw. It's just a little trick of the trade to get that out. Okay, now that I have the screen away from there, I have the portafilter gasket up in here. Here's a picture of a new gasket. In order to get the gasket out, I'm going to use a tool called a scratch-all, uh, AWL. Uh, it can be found at any uh, local home improvement store, uh, any hardware store should have. It's just a sharp point. Um, not too sharp. Some people like to use dental picks. The only problem is uh, it's very difficult, uh, easy to, to snap those off. If you replace the gasket every uh, um, about every three months, three to six months, depending upon usage, it should come out in just a couple of minutes. Uh, if you take a year to change out the gasket, uh, it should take you about 15 minutes and uh, any time over that uh, the rubber becomes petrified. The cheaper the gasket material, the lower quality, quality it is, the faster it degasses, the faster it petrifies. Um, so the suggestion is to go ahead and change that out on a frequent basis. So here we are. We're going to go ahead and place the scratch all, the punch. And what I'm going to do is try to push up with the punch and in most cases I'm not going to be able to grab onto it very well because it's a hard piece of rubber and so I'm going to with the palm of my hand I'm going to slam the back of the, the scratch all basically hammering it up in there. I don't want to use something like a hammer. Uh, I could shock the whole system and possibly loosen something inside the machine. If done correctly I should be able to pry it out and here's where if I have a dental tool and I'm pulling it out pardon me for getting in the way there uh, if I have a dental tool and if it starts to especially if it starts to snap out in pieces I can carefully uh, get up in there above the gasket and pry piece by piece by piece by piece by piece all the way around so I'm just going to pull this out because it's nice and soft. This gasket is probably about two months old, two months of use. I pull the gasket out. 
Then what I want to do is back with my straight bladed screwdriver. This is actually a six way screwdriver so I can remove the, the, the bit. I'm doing this just so that we can uh, easily see and it's not in the way. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I don't have any foreign material. I'm going to get coffee residue up in there. Uh, I also could have what is called a portafilter shim. That is just a paper gasket that you place on top of the gasket and it pushes basically it, it when I go to seat it the gasket it'll actually have the gasket down a little bit lower so that I accommodate for wear on the metal parts. One point you actually see a notch on this gasket. This is a factory uh, factory manufactured gasket. Um, the cheaper gaskets um, they're made of a much much cheaper uh, poorer version of uh, different rubber compounds, synthetic rubbers and a lot of times those cheaper ones are indicated because they don't have those notches. Uh, if we ever get water pressure, coffee pressure above the gasket and we don't have those notches, there's no place for the water coffee to drain out. So we get a lot of coffee residue up in the groove and what we also have is a possibility as you remove the portafilter for the gasket to be because of water pressure above it to actually pop out. So. Here's our gasket and we're going to go ahead and uh, give it a bend. Now if it cracks just a little bit, pardon me, if it cracks just a little bit, it's time to replace the gasket. This one's actually very, very supple. It's been used for trainings and so there's very little use on this uh, particular gasket. If it easily snaps, I either have a cheap gasket or I need to change it a little more often. It's starting to petrify, starting to harden. So, I grab my new gasket. I actually have a smooth surface and a not so smooth surface. In this, and it's a cut surface on, on the bottom side. This is the portion uh, of the gasket that is going to be facing down. It's going to be facing our portafilter and our portafilter uh, basket. Um, remember that the basket and in conjunction with the gasket forms the seal. You could replace the gasket and still have nicks in your basket. You need to be replacing your baskets on a regular basis, figure about once a year. You also have erosion that happens because the water is screaming through all of the, you know, the 1,000 holes in the basket. Those are getting larger. You'll find coffee grounds passing through. So here we go to put it in. I'm not a big proponent of uh, putting any lubricant on here. If you do lube it um, and you have a, an older group, you could have a situation where you basically are permitting it to slide out easily. If you have a, a, a situation where you have a hard time getting the gasket in, one thing you can do is attempt to um, soak it in hot water. No problem, no harm, no foul there, and the water will dry out. So uh, what we want to do uh, here is place it up in the groove. The groove's nice and clean, we know about that. Then I'm going to push it up with my finger I do not want to be using a sharp device of any sort uh, to jam it up in there. If I'm using uh, soaking that portafilter gasket in hot water, what will happen is it, sh it should be very, very pliable. So I go to put my portafilter up. This is actually a funny portafilter. It's actually a pressure gauge thermo portafilter. I go to put it up in, and the ear, as you can see, is not all the way up in the groove. Well, trick of the trade, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab one ear on one side and go to, put, go to try to cinch it up. Then I'm going to go to the other side, drop the left, come back. Now I should be able to lock it in place. When I'm done, the whole idea is my portafilter should be facing the front of the machine. If it goes too far to the right, then that means I need to put another shim in. If, if I have a hard time locking the portafilter up, it's not in, in, in going to that middle position. What we have is a situation where the gasket is pushed down too far. There's some debris. Maybe there's a, uh, uh, an old shim in there. I haven't cleaned it well. Uh, or I need to work harder checking each portion to see am I seeding it well up into its into its uh, uh, recess. Okay, we have the gasket up in there. Now I'm going to take my jet breaker, 
my diffuser screen, my diffuser screw. I'm going to place my place the assembly together, put it up on the machine, and tighten the just hand tighten the screw. I never want to use a wrench to tighten this. Also, I do not need to torque this very difficult at all, very much at all. I have a very large screwdriver here, but if I had the my smallest screwdriver, I'm just going to give it a little bit of a snug there. That's all it needs. Ready to go. And that's it as far as a uh, diffuser screen and a portafilter.